from the perspective of a showrunner, how did this event evolve from the first iteration to now? Well, the, the first one was much smaller. It only had the Spodek arena, so and there was a stage directly next to the seats and behind the seats there were the expo areas uh, and that we quickly outgrew it so uh, then we added the expo uh, next to it when the building was finished uh, and then we extended the event to, to two weeks to, to see if um, that is a viable uh, manner of conducting the, uh, the, uh, the event overall. And your opening speech was short but very touching. How do you keep your passion for esports now that you've been in the business for so long? I mean, it's it's you either you either love apples or you don't love apples. It's not like you know you love apples as a child and then at the age of 35 you stop loving apples, right? Just maybe it's a silly metaphor, but uh, it's 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 not something that you can if if you have a genuine passion for something it's not something that you will uh, necessarily lose and can we expect ESL events to grow to smaller regions can we see a large tournament in an exotic location anytime soon well uh, we always try to go to different places i mean uh, there was a time where there was never ever before a tournament in Australia, right? We had Intel Extreme Masters Australia. There was never a time when um, ESL1 visited uh, India. Now we have an ESL1 in India. Uh, same with many different countries. So uh, we like exploring. Uh, we do it more carefully now than, than before because the stakes are higher than before. But uh, we are explorers at heart and we like the fact that we are sometimes able to give people something that they have never received before. Um, and that's important. It's important in general for our company. Uh, at ESL, we want to be a place where everybody can be somebody. And everybody means the entire world. So we, we do try to visit, we do try to bring esports to many different countries. And uh, we are responsible for some of the first, you know, big esports event in, in, in some areas, so um, I don't think we're going to stop anytime soon, but we obviously have to do it in a, a careful and measured way. Now about the catalog of games. We see games like Apex Legends on the rise, we see mobile esports becoming a thing. Uh, do you plan to run tournaments for these? We are always, we've, uh, we've, we've been explorers, right? And, and everybody can be somebody that also means all, potentially all the gamers, but let's face it, if I make a video game, 10 people play it, that's not necessarily um, uh, in the scope of, of, a, of a major esports company, uh, but we try to encompass everyone if we can. So if it's, if it's fitting, um, if the community wants us to do it, if the publisher wants us to do it, um, then we tend to try it. Um, it's, it's as simple as that. Uh, we've we've had probably seven, maybe seven, between seven and nine different games at Intel Extreme Masters events, and many, many more game titles, you know, under the overall ESL umbrella. Uh, so, as I said, we're explorers, and we like to explore. We like to check out and um, and and see. Great. And finally, on a personal level, this arena here is very special. What's the significance of Katowice on you? Well, I think overall this is, you know, we were very lucky. And it wasn't just me being very lucky, we were very lucky uh, with multiple people where, uh, where essentially we got a very good set, set of circumstances for this thing to happen. It was kind of like the Big Bang uh, and it expanded. It's always emotional to come here because uh, I have a personal connection with the audience here. They know me, they like me, I know them, and I like them. Um, and, and, it's, and it's good to cultivate what we have here that is very, very different from any other esports event. Thank you and good luck. Thank you.